so with that introduction uh, i myself i am from telecom uh, i am not a very active java or android developer mostly i program in uh, php python javascript typescript these are the sometimes c c++ these are the primary languages with which uh, i do programming uh, c sharp as well so not so much uh, with the java and uh, android uh, ecosystem but lately i have been uh, dabbling with uh, gradle which is a build tool specifically written for the java ecosystem but it turns out that gradle can also be used for other languages in particular it's being used for c c++ compilation as well so uh, so don't think that gradle is a tool that can be used only for building uh, java projects or android projects earlier today i was talking to ramanathan he works with scala and scala they have their own build tool uh, called uh, scala build tool sd scala sbt but uh, apart from that uh, i found out that gradle can also be used for building uh, scala projects so what it really means is that gradle is very flexible you can it has uh, programming uh, power that you can use it for pretty much any programming language for building any program any any project in any language so it's good to know uh, you know how to use gradle and uh, what are the features of gradle and how it improves upon maven these are some of the things uh, we are going to touch upon today so to give some context i am working in telecom and uh, recently i have been consulting for a company startup in bangalore and uh, recently we purchased a software product from another company so when they gave the installer the installer has to be installed in linux so we installed it and then the installer gave an error Uh, so let's call it error error a so we went back to them and told them okay this error is coming during installation can you fix it so immediately they fixed it and then they gave a new installer so now when we tried the installer we got two other errors the problem a was solved but then now we had b and c so we went back to them and said okay now we have these two problems during installation b and c so then they went back fixed it gave us a new installer now the b and c was fixed but the problem a was coming back in a different way so what so the point i'm trying to get at here is that uh, very often we get these kind of repetitive errors mainly because there is something wrong in the way the whole process is architected either the way people manage their code is wrong or the build system is wrong so in this particular example one of the possible causes is that one of the objects of the build was stale so they had used the old object but then linked it with the new object so either their scm software configuration management is done wrong or their build system is doing something wrong so this is one of the reasons why you know uh, build system uh, is a very important thing there are many other reasons another reason is of course efficiency how quickly can you do build so one of the things with build is build takes time so you have a project and a build which takes 10 minutes maybe too long for most developers but if the same project can be built in 5 uh, minutes then that's a big advantage because now you can you don't need to wait for 5 more minutes so this is so important that someone someone actually made a joke out of it and you can see it here i'll put it up on the screen so this is a famous one from uh, X K C D. So uh, yeah, this has been uh, like this. So many other uh, things relevant to software has been going around. So this is a famous one where compiling takes time. So efficiency is more uh, is quite important. And uh, Gradle claims that you know it is much more performant compared to other build systems. be it, uh, be it uh, ant or maven or other alternative build systems so gradle somehow does a better job and we will see what are the techniques gradle uses to compile or build code faster so quickly let's look at uh, the features of gradle now don't let's not think that gradle is something new gradle is in fact inspired by many other build systems that have come earlier so take for example right here 
Gradle is inspired by Maven, Gantt, Ivy, as well as Apache Ant. So from each of these earlier build systems, it has adopted something. So for example, from Ivy, which did dependency management quite well, Gradle has adopted that. Maven did a very good job convention over configuration. So Gradle has adopted that. That means many things in Gradle are very minimal. You can write a very simple build script. Gradle automatically knows how to interpret that build script because there are certain conventions which have been adopted. But then it improves upon Maven by saying that it also makes it easier for configuring on top of the current conventions. So this is one of the like criticisms of Maven. While convention makes things easy, it's sometimes very hard for us to uh, configure Maven build system because everything is tied to convention. Whereas in Gradle, there is a fine balance between uh, convention and configuration. While convention makes things very easy, makes your build scripts very simple, you can you also have the power or retain the power to configure uh, the build system in any way you want. So that is the flexibility that Gradle brings. Another thing about Gradle is uh, uh, it adopts from uh, this Gantt Groovy DSL. So as you know, Groovy is a programming language which is derived from Java. And uh, it has pretty much Java syntax. Uh, it uh, changes a few things. But on top of uh, using Groovy, they have built a domain specific language for build purposes. And this makes it easy for uh, developers to adopt Ant as a uh, to adopt Gantt as a build system. But uh, why adopt a different build system when Gradle can do it for you? So what Gradle has done, adopted the Groovy, uh, Groovy DSL into their build system. And today it is not limited to Groovy. You can also use Kotlin. So they have built a DSL on top of Kotlin to do a build. So these are some of the things, uh, you know, Gradle does uh, better than the previous uh, build systems. One more thing which might be useful to mention is the ex extensibility via plugins, which Maven also had. But the plugin act architecture of Maven was a little complex and it was kind of hard to maintain in the long run. And many people today uh, complain about uh, using XML because if you look at a Maven system, the build is typically what there is a uh, top level file called pom.xml. So everything is uh, derived from that XML file. So today we know that many software projects have moved away from XML uh, to either JSON or particularly for configuration, they have moved to YAML. XML is deemed to be very verbose, hard to maintain. So uh, people have preferred to move to other uh, kind of syntax. So that is where you know Gradle also changes things. It doesn't use XML anymore. As I mentioned, it uses Groovy DSL. And we will see an example what exact, how exactly a Groovy uh, kind of a build script looks like uh, in Gradle. And uh, the Gradle system itself is minimal. Everything is uh, added on top of the core installation via plugins. So that means that you don't need to install a very heavy uh, build system. It's quite lightweight and you install the necessary plugins as required for your project. So this is uh, an overview of the features of Gradle. Uh, now some of you may be coming from uh, uh, an environment of let's say uh, Maven for example. You may be using Maven for your Java projects or even for your Android projects. In Android, it's uh, very likely that people are already using Gradle because Gradle is adopted by Android Studio as the default uh, build system. So most of the people who are working on uh, Android apps, they are probably already using Gradle. But it's interesting to compare uh, how Gradle performs against Maven. But keep in mind, this chart is actually uh, sourced from Gradle website. So we have to take it with a pinch of salt. Uh, I'm sure uh, there are other benchmarks where maybe Maven is performing better than uh, Gradle, but at least from this chart, it looks like uh, there is a clear winner. So if you look at this, uh, you know, the one in light green is how long a Gradle build takes. And then this dark column is how long a Maven build takes. So three scenarios are given. 
clean build with test cases, clean build, but with cache enabled. So when cache is enabled, uh, Gradle does a much better job compared to Maven. But of course, Maven also has caching. So keep that in mind. So if a similar chart is prepared by Maven, Maven uh, on a Maven website, you might get a you might not get such a big performance difference in a compilation of a single change. So here again, uh, Gradle does better. Now, of course, we might be interested to know why, how come Gradle is so much faster, right? So there are three things uh, which are coming into play. One is incremental builds. So Gradle is able to track the dependencies much more, much in a much better way compared to other build systems. So when a particular file uh, file is modified, when a particular file is, just hold on, I can switch off my video. So when a particular file is modified, uh, for example, uh, it knows exactly what are the dependent uh, object files or jar files that need to be built. The other thing it does better is uh, caching of the builds. So of course, Maven also does it, but it's claimed that Gradle does it better. The most important difference uh, that Gradle has compared to other build systems is there is it's on a client server architecture. So there is a Gradle daemon always running in your system. That is first time you launch it, it will be uh, not there. So the first build will be a little slower, but subsequent builds will be faster because already a Gradle daemon has been launched and it will keep running in the background as a background process, basically listening for a new build execution. So that means that Gradle will save on the initialization phase. That is to say, it doesn't has to, it doesn't have to spend time initializing the JVM or startup time of the JVM, because Gradle fundamentally is a Java program. So it runs on the JVM, uh, and uh, by having a daemon running, you save on the startup time of the JVM. Not only that, the daemon also caches information across builds. So the subsequent build, it is much faster. Then it has another feature called uh, file system watch, where when you are, let's say, updating a file, it proactively che checks which file has been updated and which targets have to be updated during the build. So it is already ready to do the build. It, it's just waiting for you to start the build. And be even, so meaning that even before you ask Gradle to do a build, it already knows what has to be built because it is actively watching the file system. And another feature of Gradle, which I found very useful, is something called a build scan. So with a build scan, what happens? I will show you in a demo. It actually collects a lot of information that, uh, during the build, and this information is then relayed to an analyzer. And on a browser, you can visualize how the actual build happened, what part of the build took a long time where you can optimize. So you can potentially find problem areas and optimize your build uh, builds in the long run. So this is uh, something that's not so easily available in other build systems. So we'll take a look at a demo of this a little later. Now, before we go to the demo, uh, a short introduction to the history of Gradle. So it started somewhere around 2008. It was an open source pro project from the very beginning. But in 2010, it continued to be an open source project, but uh, there was a uh, there became a, a company called Gradle Incorporated, which was behind the project. So now there is some seriousness to maintain the project and give it a commercial uh, offering, give it a commercial uh, flavor. Then, of course, the releases, uh, continuous releases are there. 2012 first release happened. That is like 10 years back. So Gradle is not something new. Uh, it's been there for 10 years. And uh, in 2015, it achieved 1 million downloads per month. Today, what, where are we? In 2022, it is getting something like 30 million downloads per month. So it is one of the popular open source projects out there. Not only that, I think here in 2010, it actually won an award called a Springy Award which is an award given, I believe, to open source projects. 
So uh, the architecture of Gradle is uh, quite interesting to read about. Then uh, there is something called Gradle Enterprise. Uh, so this is an on-premise version of Gradle Cloud Services. So we already saw one of those cloud services. So I talked about build scans. So that is one of the cloud services uh, given by Gradle. So Gradle has a big ecosystem behind it, unlike other uh, build systems. Then some more uh, uh, you know, performance measures. Uh, Gradle itself, every release, they try to improve the performance of Gradle. So you can see Gradle 2.14, it took two seconds. Now it takes like uh, 1.2 seconds for a certain you know, Java project with uh, 1000 modules. So with every release of Gradle, they are, the team is also actively trying to make it faster. So with this introduction, let's take a, have, have a demo, but before the demo, any questions from anyone? If there are questions, we'll take it uh, if I can answer them. Otherwise, yeah, we can also have the questions later on. OK, no questions. We'll move on to the demo. Uh, so, so I have here uh, a demo project kind of. Uh, yeah, this is a demo project. So typically, a build file in Gradle is called build.gradle. You can see it on the left side. I just enlarge it. So this is the default uh, uh, build file. Uh, just like in Maven, you have a pom.xml. Here you call it uh, build.gradle. This elephant symbol is the logo of Gradle. So as uh, is the common practice, we start with a hello world example. So very simple, we define a task called hello world and then a little bit of code inside it. Now, first thing you will notice is it doesn't look like configuration. It looks like code because use of curly braces is typically what we do in a programming language. Then you have a programming statement, print ln and then a string. So you look at it and then immediately you start seeing, uh, you know, uh, the build script looks more like code rather than a uh, YAML file or a JSON file or XML file. So that is one of the immediate thing that strikes you as a pro programmer. So which means that programmers will become very comfortable with writing uh, Gradle scripts because it's not very different from their day to day job. So let's see uh, what happens when we try to invoke Gradle on this particular configuration file. So now on my system, Gradle is already installed. So I simply call Gradle and uh, I have to give the name of the task. So as you can see here, we have given the name Hello World. So I do this and let's see what happens. So it ex executed it, it printed Hello World and uh, it took two seconds. It says one actionable task, one task executed. So which is what we have here, task Hello World and after doing this, it printed, it simply executed this because this is just an example uh, hello world script. It just executed this print ln hello world. Now this is actually groovy code. Now you may be asking uh, what is this print ln and uh, how do I know something like this exists? So we know this because what is inside these curly brackets is actually groovy code which means that to write a uh, build script in uh, Gradle, for Gradle, let's say, you need to know a little bit of knowledge of Groovy programming language, but Groovy is not that difficult to learn. In fact, Groovy itself is based on Java, so it's an easy language to learn. And I would suggest that it is, uh, rather than shooting in the dark, it's better to spend a couple of hours, two, three hours learning Groovy, then you can easily write build scripts for Gradle. So that is what I found from experience. So this is a very simple build script. Let's take an example of another build script here, little bit more complex. So we are defining again task here. You see the syntax is slightly different task. Hello world, but there is an alternative syntax. You can do it like this also tasks register task X do. So this is an alternative way of writing uh, a task. 
the same thing could have been written like this. For example, you can say, for example, task task. Right. This is how we did it for the hello world example. Task name of the task and then the code inside. Same thing. Task task x code inside. But if you want to save it in a variable, you can do it differently. So tasks register task x and then saving it in a variable. Now why do they do this? Because why do why have they done this in this particular example? Because they are using this variable again later on. Because not only defining the task here, but after that they are continuing the configuration on the task. So for that reason, they thought it. Uh, so it is wise to save this task in a variable task X and then use it again later. on. So let's look at this build script for a moment. Three tasks are defined. All tasks do nothing more than a trivial print. So task X, task Y, task Z. But in this configuration, we are doing something extra. What we are saying task X depends on task Y. Task Y depends on task Z. Now, if I want to build task X or execute task X, what do I have to do? So the answer is obvious. I have to first build task Y because this depends on this. But task Y itself depends on task Z. So I have to first build task Z before Y can be ready. And after Y is ready, I can build task X. So what it means, uh, Gradle allows you, like any build system, it allows you to specify the uh, dependencies and how they are dependent on each other. So this is what we call as a <coughs> DHG, which is uh, directed a cyclic graph, which is a concept from computer science. So in the in this particular case, we are saying that task X depends on task Y, task Y depends on task Z. So the build uh, order will be reverse. Task Z is built first, then task Y is built, and then task X is built. And remember, there should not be any cycles. You cannot say suddenly that task Z is, depends on task X. It will not make sense. So the, it should be a cyclic graph. And this is how a build system will work. So now demo one, let's build it. Now the thing is we cannot call hello world and we cannot call task X also. And I'll tell you why. If I say gradle task case, something went wrong with the build. So what does it say? Task X not found in the root project gradle. Some candidates are so something like that it is saying. So basically it has not found the task X. Now why is this error coming? Because remember that uh, Gradle like Maven adopts convention. So what is the convention here? Convention is that Gradle will always look for a file with the name build.gradle. It is not going to look at demo one as a build file. Even though it may have the same syntax, it may also be groovy DSL. It is not going to look at this file. So by convention, it will only look at build.gradle. And in this file, there is only one task which is hello world. So it doesn't find the task X because we have these tasks in a different file. But then, as I said, apart from convention, Gradle also allows you to configure things. So now we can change the build file from the default. So in the command line, there is an option called minus B. And you can say, I want to change my build file to demo one and execute task X. So when I do this, now you can see we already said task X depends on task Y, task Y depends on task Z. So now we, this output makes sense. Task Z is executed first, task Y, and then task X. Okay. So this is an example of uh, how a build would be done. And you can pretty much think of what these tasks are. For example, this might be a build. This might be copying files from one directory to another. This might be executing a set of test cases. Right. So this is how you know a build, you can build a build system in Gradle. Any questions at this point before we move, move on uh, with further examples?
Oh, it's fine. Uh, thank you. Okay, okay. Thanks for that. Any anyone else? Any questions? So, how many of you? Just a show of hands. How many of you are already Java developers, or you are using Maven? Okay, Tarun. Okay, few. Yeah, quite a number of you. Yeah. So, so some of the things will be familiar. So, we will look at an example of uh, Maven as well a little later. Now let's take a, a dummy project. Uh, I don't know if anything is there in this point. Let's just see this. OK, we already have this build.gradle and demo. OK, I want to show one more thing in the demo demo file before I move to another example. Now we know that everything in Gradle is almost like a executable, uh, almost like code. So this do last implies that it is executed last, but you can also do things like do first and so on. Right, so you can do that also. Let's say print ln, print ln x first. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to print something outside. Right, so start x, let's say. And then I'm going to print something at the end of the file, end of this task x. Print ln end x. Okay, so let's review this again. I am defining task X and I am saying inside task X two blocks of code. So actually this is groovy code. Uh, in groovy, this is actually called closure. I'll just write it down. It is called closure, which is a very important concept in groovy and also in few other languages. But especially in groovy, it is very central to uh, how closure is used for making this build system. So what we have here is really closure. And uh, in this Gradle build system, we have given it a name. Do first, do last. And here also for the task, we have given it a name. But apart from doing some printouts inside this, uh, we are also doing something outside. Now let's see how this builds in our build system. So I'm going to go back to this Gradle minus B demo one task X. So what, what has happened? Same thing task Z, Y and the task X. So the old order is still there, right? but there are some things which uh, are puzzling. Start X is printed first. So let's go back to the code. So we expected this because we are, we are asking the system to build task X. So it prints this first, even before it prints, in, it goes to task Y and Z. Although task X depends on Y, we might have thought, you know, this would be the first printout, right? Task Z should be built first, then task Y should be built next. Then only we come to task X, and when task X executes, then these printouts should come up. So this is kind of what we expected, but the printout are not like that. Start, start X is printed first, end X is printed next. That means these two are printed. Then it goes to Z and Y. Then it comes to X first, task X. Then it prints this. And then it prints this. Okay. Now to understand this, let's go back to our article here, which says exactly how a build occurs. So a gradle build actually occurs in three phases. And this is very important to understand. The first phase is called initialization. Second phase is configuration and the final phase is execution. So in initialization phase, it sets up the build environment. It looks at the projects which are out there and which projects need to be built. So that is the kind of thing it looks at in the initialization phase. Then in the configuration phase, it determines which are the tasks which need to be run. So for example, we asked Gradle to build task X. In this phase, it will determine I need to build not only task X, but task Y and task Z. 
So those things will be figured out by Gradle in this configuration phase. Then in the execution phase is where, where the actual uh, execution of the tasks take place. Now let's look at closely this initialization phase. This initialization phase runs first. And now it will make sense why these two are printed first, because these two are part of the initialization phase. These are not executed during initialization. Right? So these two are part of initialization because they are outside these two code blocks. This is part of the task, no doubt. It is part of the task, but it's part of the initialization phase of the task. So that is why now our output makes sense. First we print start X, then we print end X. Then it goes to execute the other dependent tasks. So we have this as the printout, this as the next printout. Then it goes to execute task X. During the execution phase, we say do first. So it will execute this first. Then it will do this last. Right? So within the task, you have a choice to break up the execution in distinct phases because you might want to do fancy things like parallelizing the build and stuff like that, which we will not cover today. But there is a reason why you want to break up your execution into different phases within the task. So these are again by convention, do first has a certain meaning, do last has a certain meaning. Now our output makes perfect sense why we get the output like this. OK, so remember that a Gradle build always has three phases, initialization, configuration and execution. Now one best practice is you have to minimize how much code you put in outside. That means in the initialization phase, you have to minimize the amount of code. The reason for that is if you put too much code in the initialization phase, it will slow down your build. Because let's assume that nothing in task, uh, none of the dependencies for task has changed. So you don't actually need to do much for task X. That means the execution is very minimal. But because you have put a lot of code in the initialization part, your build will still take more time. So the best practice for uh, new developers is minimize the amount of initialization code you have in your task phase, in, in your task. So basically we want to minimize the amount of initialization. If at all you want to initialize, you can put it inside here, for example. You put it inside. So the initialization is, I mean, this is during the execution. Let's say you want to initialize variables and stuff like that or copy files. You can do it in the do first and then you begin your. So that, that will make a more optimized build script. So there are, of course, many more best practices which I'm not going to cover today, but this article here covers it in detail. Right. So what are the best practices for using Gradle? So a lot of details are covered here and it also gives links how you can improve your build script. OK. Now we'll quickly go to some uh, two more examples I want to cover. So first thing I want to do is get rid of these files here that we have. So Gradle, we'll delete this. We'll also delete build.gradle and then the demo one. So we have a clean project folder. Yes code, that is fine. That is ID related. So let's go back here to our. Uh, so now if I do a Gradle uh, build, nothing will happen, obviously, uh, because uh, there is nothing, right? I do a Gradle build. See, there is no build script. So you can see here a Gradle build should contain settings.gradle or settings gradle.kts. This is Kotlin related file. It can it may also contain build.gradle or build.gradle.kts. So build.gradle is groovy DSL. But if you are uh, more familiar with Kotlin, then you may want to write your build script in Kotlin. So build.gradle.kts. Because now, uh, you know, Android developers, uh, they can also use Kotlin as a programming language. So they may be more comfortable writing a build script in Kotlin. So this is a DSL based on Kotlin. 
So now, of course, our build here failed because we don't have anything. So we can do a Gradle in it. So to start a simple project, Gradle pro provides templates. So you can do it, use them using Gradle in it. So now we have a clean folder and it is asking what kind of project you want to build. So let's say two application. I want to build, let's say a Java application. So I say two. And then it will ask me what are what language you are programming for or programming in C++, Groovy, Java, Kotlin, Scala, Swift. So you can see most of them are two to five are like uh, a variant of Java really. But it also allows uh, building C++ and Swift. So those people also can start using Gradle as their build system. In fact, I have seen that uh, Python projects can also use Gradle. So that is also an option. So now we will say three because uh, as an example, we'll take Java as the project. And then it says split functionality across multiple sub projects. So this is one of the benefits of Gradle because I have seen people complaining about Maven. Maven is not so good when you have to build multiple projects in the same build. It, the build is not, I mean, the configuration is not so flexible. Whereas this is one of the areas in which uh, Gradle handles things very nicely. In a single build, you can tackle multiple projects. So in our example, a single project is enough. So one. And what kind of DSL you want? So we are familiar with Groovy. I am familiar with Groovy. So we'll go with this. And then it asks generate using new APIs. We are not so interested, so go with this. And then what kind of test framework? So let's say for J unit Jupyter. What name you want? This is the default name. This it picks up based on the name of the folder. So let's go with the default. And then source package, go with the default. So it has created something. So let's take a look what it has created. So you can see here, there is no build.gradle because we designed this as a Java application and the application code is inside here, app. And inside app source, we have main, which has the main Java code, then the test cases are here. So there are in this, in this example project, which Gradle init has created for us, there is one Java source code, which is the entry point for the application. Then there is one test case for that. Okay, so th this is all that we have in this project, two files. And uh, now in this app folder, importantly, look, let's look at the build.gradle file. Now it's got a little bit more complex. Earlier our file was very simple because we were doing simply hello world and we were doing sprint, nothing more than that. But now we are building a Java application. Now to build a Java application, there are some dependencies and plugins. So one of the plugins is this one. So remember I told you that uh, uh, the default installation of Gradle is very minimal. So even to build a Java application, you have to install this as a plugin. So that is what this build script is, script is specifying. As a plugin, it says application is required, which is the repository we want to use, Maven Central. Everyone is familiar what it is. What are the dependencies? Because we we wanted unit tests as well, J unit Jupyter. So this is now a de dependency. As this is for testing. It's a test dependency. And from where will this be picked up? It will be picked up from Maven Central. So that is specified because of this repositories. Dependencies, the other dependency is, uh, this is used by the, this particular application, so nothing to worry about that. And uh, what is the main class? Gradle.app. We saw that file just now. And we are uh, uh, defining a test. Uh, so what kind of test platform, JUnit platform we are going to use. So this is all, all we have. So, uh, okay. So let's look at uh, the build. So we saw this, so we have the build inside app, but Gradle can pick it up. Now you will notice something else. Uh, I, I Earlier I called something like this Gradle and then I gave a command, hello world. 
but you can also do gradle w dot bat. In fact, this wrapper is what is recommended typically. So what this wrapper will do is uh, it can also upgrade your gradle if required. So so this is the recommended way of running gradle, but you can also execute it directly like this if you want. So this is gradle w it's a w for wrapper dot bat. If you are in Linux, you might use this one gradle w. So anyway, uh, we don't know what are the tasks. So what, there are some basic commands. Uh, so let's look at tasks. So now you see our Gradle daemon had stopped. So it is starting a new Gradle daemon for this. So these are all the different tasks which you can run with this current build file, right? So you can run this project, you can build the project, you can clean, assemble a jar. So all this comes to you by default, even though our build script doesn't specify any of this. This is the beauty of uh, Gradle because uh, the, uh, like we mentioned, it is convention over configuration. So a lot of things are already pre-configured for you by convention. And that is why all these tasks are automatically available for you. Build test is also there, I'm sure somewhere. Yeah, test verification tasks. And then uh, tasks. So this is what we called just now, and we got a list of tasks. So this is uh, how it works. So now let's say I do a Gradle build. What it does, assembles and tests this project. So it will not only build, but it will also run the test case. So let us do this build, see what happens. So it has built successfully. Uh, it says, so let's look at the project folder. What it has built. So you can see here, there is a bin file, bin folder, an app dot class. So it has built it. There is a build folder. Uh, yeah, so a lot of things here as well. So a build has happened. Uh, let's look at some other task. Uh, what else did we see here? Run. OK, running the project. So Gradle. So we have done a build. Let's execute that app. Gradle run. So you see the app executed and we got the printout. Hello world. This is what we had in our Java file here. Hello world. Right, so we have been able to build this project. And in fact, we created the project simply by doing Gradle in it, and then we gave the commands build the project. So we can see all the tasks by simply saying. Tasks. There are other useful commands. We can also see multi all the projects in this folder are addressed by this. So there is only one project which is the there is a root project called Gradle, and under that there is a project called App. So that is how we have structured our app here. Right. So root project, and under that there is something called uh, this app as the dependent, uh, the actual project. You can also say dependencies. What are the dependencies that have been picked up by this Gradle script? Root project Gradle no configuration. A web base, okay. What happened? Yeah, so dependencies displays are dependent, declared the root project Gradle. So this is the Gradle root project, but you can also see in the app project dependencies that I don't know how to configure that, but you can figure it out. So in the Gradle project, there are no dependencies, but uh, in app tasks, uh, yeah, running app. No, this works. Try running app tasks. I will explore the command line so much. So yeah, so the dependencies for the project 
so this is a sub project so under so you have the root project which is gradle under that we created the application named app so now we query the dependencies on app so when we do this we get this tree so you can see these are all the dependencies com.google guava and then the dependence of that then we have uh, j unit jupiter and then the dependencies of that so this dependency tree uh, is i mean this this is also important uh, for resolving uh, the dependencies okay so any questions before we move to the last example i have one more example based on maven project but before that if you have any questions we can take that so okay no question multiple yeah. uh, gradle dot build dot gradle in a project also right and if the project is a big big one yeah yeah modules so it is a yeah it is a very good question i have not explored that but i am sure there are two ways in which you can do it uh, one way is as you can see here we have the gradle project so we have two levels here the gradle folder is the root project then app is the pro another project within the root project so this app has a build dot gradle but at the root project level also you can have a gradle build dot gradle file so that way you can uh, make your uh, build script more modular but to answer your question properly there is another method which is described in this article what's the right way to organize a gradle project so this question makes sense you know when you have a very large project lots of modules and your basically your build script should not get too complex that is the whole idea so how do you organize your build system in a more modular fashion so now let's remember first first let's remember that the build system in gradle is more like code it is configuration no doubt but it is also code okay so now the entire build system can be organized in a file folder called build source and inside this build source you can have a build dot gradle and in, uh, and along with that you can have folders like this deploy dot java de deployment plugin dot java and even test cases for that so now so this deploy dot java may have a lot of complex code right but this complex code instead of putting all this logic in build dot gradle remember that this is not application code this is code related to how to deploy your application into the cloud let's say let's say this is about deploying your application into azure or into a kubernetes cluster this is what this code is all about so it is properly part of the build system it is not your application code so don't be confused about that so this is part of your build system but this is complex logic and instead of putting all this complex logic in the build script you put it as a separate dot java file like you would write a normal app uh, you write your java program but now you are writing it for build purpose and this will now be accessible from the build script so using groovy dsl you will be able to refer to this deploy in a very in, in very simple uh, dsl language and then now your build script becomes much more modular much more maintainable because now all the complex logic is extracted away abstracted into different files within your within this build source folder so this is the recommended way to organize complex projects and uh, like i uh, gave an earlier answer you can see in this they have other build scripts also sub project 1 build dot gradle kts sub project 2 build dot gradle dot kts and then at the top level another build dot gradle so there are two ways you know in which you can make your build system more modular i hope that answers your question yeah i have seen that uh, so i was just checking uh, any there further is... questions before the last example uh, 
okay no questions good let's move on to the last example so i have here uh, a system which one of my teams has developed you so can see the files here i suppose so you can see here uh, you have a, this is a typical java application uh, it's built on uh, spring boot it's a web application built on using spring boot so you got asset files and stuff like that uh, i'll show you it. and uh, this is a, a using maven build form.xml logo.png and so on so let's go to this folder so now uh, let's assume uh, so we want to migrate from maven to gradle so that is the purpose here so let's do gradle dot in it already we have maven files here so what gradle does it is smart enough to know that this system is now found a maven build so what it will do it will try to automatically generate a gradle build system from the form.xml and other files of maven so default yes select a build script dsl so we will go with the groovy as before generate build using new apis no yes so we will go with no okay so it is doing the init migrating from maven so it's done uh, so now let's look at what are the files here so you notice that it has created build.gradle then there is a dot gradle directory also then these files have also have come into play gradle directory gradle w w dot bat so all the things that we needed for gradle are there settings dot gradle is also there so this is also important so now let's look at uh, this particular build script what i'll do i'll close this folder i'll open the other one ems ems oh, yeah, that's correct ems so we are interested in build.gradle so i am opening that so this build file has been created for us automatically by looking so what it has done it has looked at the maven and it has figured out what to put in this file so let's look at our uh, see it is already trying to compile we can check the details see it is already trying to build this project using gradle now because now this integration is coming from where this is coming from the id vs code so vs code has determined that this is now a gradle project and it is trying to build this project so anyway let's look at the build.gradle so plugins java so because it's a java project this is required as a public plugin maven publish because this involves publishing to the maven repository as well which are the repositories two repositories maven local and maven at this url so you may be wondering where is all this coming from it's all coming from your original project form.xml so here they must have specified some of these things i didn't look at this closely but uh, yeah here some of these things must have been specified so they must have picked it up from here so then let's go back to our build.gradle and here you can see all these dependencies are created right all these dependencies are in place but it is all in xml so it's little hard to read but then now if we look at our uh, gradle file here it's a lot easier on the high so the same dependencies are now migrated into a gradle build script so it looks at uh, the dependency and it also takes the version that is needed test requirements are captured here and a few other things 
which are taken from this form.xml java version publishing where to publish and so on task java compile task name test okay so all these things are done and now you can actually do a build but then here already this guy is building and another thing is i have installed the gradle plugin for vs code so in the earlier days uh, gradle was not uh, having good integration with uh, ids very uh, sparse integration but today that situation has changed so gradle has good integration with vs code eclipse uh, jet brains ids so most of the popular ids have good integration with the gradle so this itself is a plugin on vs code and if you click this it will tell you you know whether a gradle daemon is running or if it is not running it will start a gradle daemon it will list all the tasks of gradle and so on pin tasks recent tasks and so on so what we used to do on command line now it becomes easier through this plugin via the id so you can open this and see what are all the different tasks build documentation help other publication the same thing you can do it from the command line by saying gradle tasks gradle dependencies but now things are made easier because gradle integration is available with the id and now you can build the system you can do testing and so on any questions at this point i think we have come to the end so this is the overview of gradle uh, so whether it will work for your project let's say you are already working on java you are using maven as the build tool so you will have to figure it out whether it makes sense for you to migrate to uh, gradle so i believe that uh, if nothing else i think your build time will come down that i believe might be one of the advantages one thing i didn't show you uh, it is worth showing actually let's go to yeah, i can use this also gradle build let's say i do a build here so I, i there is one thing i wanted to show you which, which was build scan so let me dominate this and run it again so i am passing an option called dash dash scan so we going to build it but while building we are going to do a scan and that will give us some insights how gray how the build system works and in a complex build system it can help you figure out where are the bottlenecks now i want to point out this one one incap incompatible and one stock daemon could not be reused so the reason it says incompatible i uh, the thing is our vs code started a daemon independently so for that reason it could uh, so i am guessing that is the reason so you should use either one of those if you are into ides then do all your build from ides so this kind of problem will occur if you keep switching between id build and command line build so you see we should stick to one of them so it is building it will take uh, maybe few few more seconds let's see so the point is that this scan will give us some insights uh, meanwhile any questions we can take while this is building
So Ramanathan, you are there? Yep, I'm there. So you can try uh, Gradle in it on your Scala project. I will do that. I don't have the setup in the system. I'll do yeah, that. Not now, of course. I'm suggesting later on you can try and then yep. you'll see what kind of build file it throws up. Sure. Hello. Hi. Oh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Edmund. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Uh, one is uh, Gradle support only Java or any other language also supported? Few other languages. We saw that. Uh, so uh, based on Java, there are other languages like Kotlin, Groovy, Scala. Those are also supported. Plus C++ and uh, Swift are also supported. OK, like whatever are the uh, flavors of Java, right? So th only those are supported like JVM based uh, languages. No, no, no. I'm saying C++ is also supported. Then uh, Swift is also supported. OK, sure. Got it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, people have also used it for Python. Okay. Although if you do a Gradle in it, it doesn't come in those options, but people have used it for Python also. OK. And uh, one more, uh, the dependencies uh, we mentioned in the Maven, right? XML. So yeah. uh, like similar, uh, like exactly same repos it uses in the Gradle or it's a different repo uh, to pull the dependencies from the same, source. Same, yeah. I think it has just picked it up from there only. OK. So in our build.gradle uh, repo, it has taken this repo.maven Apache. Maybe this is coming from the init because init has some logic in it. Mm -hmm. So when it is converting from a Maven project to Gradle automatically, it uses this. But let's look at the form.xml, what it has in the here over here. OK, yeah, yeah. So the here, reason why I'm asking is uh, like, let's say I, I move from uh, Maven to Gradle and if I see any uh, issues while building or in the code, right? So it yeah. could be because of dependencies. So. That's where uh, but asking. all the dependencies that you see here, yeah. they will be imported into the Gradle dot build. Nothing will be left out as such. OK, I can compare uh, across and uh, verify it, right? confirm it, right? Once it is ready. Well, the better, system, better way would be to do a clean build uh, using Maven. And then yeah. after migrating, you should achieve the same thing in uh, Gradle. Gradle, yeah. So then if, if, that, if that works, then that that would be it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I don't know. It was. Uh... Yes, OK. Yeah, there's some network issue. It was for some reason it was slow. So anyway, when you do a scan like this Gradle build scan, at the end of the scan, it will give you a URL like this. So what you do, you copy this URL, go to your browser, It. So uh, what is happening? What is this magic? No magic. During the build, when you give this option dash dash scan, the build system automatically sends all this information to the cloud. That is build related metadata about how the build is progressing. That information goes to the cloud and it is saved in the crowd, cloud. And when you access this uh, custom generated URL, you get insights into how the build actually happened. So at the top level, zero failures, zero build deprecations, 11 tasks executed in four minutes, six seconds, one avoided task saving. So how much time you saved? And what are the things that happened? which task took how much time and you can dig deeper console log right what what kind of here there's nothing happening but let's say in your build script you are putting some print ln for debugging purpose so those things are also captured here timeline so how the uh, build happened so initialization and configuration remember that there are three phases initialization configuration if you click it took certain amount of time execution, all this and under execution, different tasks. And you can zoom in if you want. Zoom into this jar, click on that. So you get more details. It took 31 seconds and so on. Performance, so you can analyze this 
you know, dependency resolution during execution. So remember our earlier example, task X, task Y, task Z, all that will come up here. So it will give a split, you know, how the dependencies are resolved and these kind of things. Task execution, build, cache, yeah, payment, network activity, and so on. Build dependencies, dependencies, two repositories. Okay, so remember we configured two repositories, Maven, local, and uh, Maven. And these are the dependencies it obtained from this repo. These, these are local dependencies, Java related. Yeah. So you get insights into how the build actually happened. So in a complex build system, this will help you figure out problems and optimize your build. I don't know if Maven has something like this, but uh, this is uh, touted as one of the important features of Gradle. So that's it from me. Uh, uh, any final questions before we log off? OK, if there are no questions, uh, we'll take leave here. Uh, if you want more information, obviously you can go to our article on devopedia.org. There is an article titled Gradle. So here you can find more information.